Hello everyone. Today let us study about Hall effect. We are going to start with Hall effect in case of metals and then switch over to Hall effect in case of semiconductors. So finally we will be deriving some of the equations which are having the prime importance in understanding Hall effect and finally draw some conclusions out of it. It was first discovered by Edwin Hall in the year 1879 and that's why the effect is named as Hall effect. So what actually is Hall effect? So if you consider a current carrying conductor and apply magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of current then a voltage or potential difference will be developed across the conductor in the direction perpendicular to both current as well as magnetic field and this effect is nothing but Hall effect which is well known. So let us understand properly first with respect to metals. Consider a conductor. Let us consider the coordinates x, y, z. Here suppose that an electric current taken as Jx is flowing in a wire which is nothing but a conductor in x direction. Let us apply magnetic field Bz to the wire in z direction. So both are perpendicular to each other. And due to these two it is going to lead us to an additional electric field which will be normal to both Jx and Bz that is along y direction and here we can consider two cases what happens when magnetic field is not there and what happens in the influence of magnetic field. First Bz is taken to be 0 that is when no magnetic field is applied there will be an electric current flowing in the positive x direction because we have already considered a current carrying conductor and the conduction electrons will be drifting with a velocity v in negative x direction because electrons are having negative charge that's why they are going to drift in opposite direction. When magnetic field is applied that is Bz is not equal to 0. In that case the Lorentz force which is nothing but F is equals to E into V cross B causes the electrons to bend downwards. And due to this bending it results in accumulation of electrons on the lower surface which produces net negative charge on the lower surface. We know that Lorentz force when we apply magnetic field is given by F is equals to E into V cross P which just implies the nature of velocity as well as magnetic field. So both are going to be normal to each other and the force produced will be normal to both of them. This is the force which is acted upon the electron which will be having the velocity v when magnetic field b is applied. So because of this Lorentz force the electrons are going to bend downwards because we have considered a metal and it consists of a number of free electrons and due to the effect of magnetic field applied these electrons will accumulate on the lower side of the conductor or the wire and when that happens simultaneously a net positive charge appears in the upper surface because of the deficiency of electrons. So whenever electrons are deficient means those are nothing but holes and that will be created on the 
upper surface of the conductor and this combination of positive and negative surface charges create a downward electric field which is called as hall field denoted as eh so that will be along the negative y direction and this is due to the surface charges accumulated on lower and upper surface of the wire due to the application of magnetic field then let us see what actually is the value of eh which is nothing but hall field for that let us consider the lorentz field lorentz field denoted as fl which produces the charge accumulation in the first place is in negative y direction and it can be denoted as e into vx into b because e is the charge of electron and this electrons are moving with the velocity vx because we are considered the current along x axis into b here we are not considering the cross product because v as well as b and the force acting due to the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other that's why the cross product the theta value depending on the theta value we are just getting fl is equals to e into vx into b and the point to remember here is this is a negative quantity because vx is towards the left means along the negative x axis that's why fl becomes negative so lorentz force is opposed by the field created by the surface charges which produces a force and that's why we can consider the steady state because the accumulation process continues until the hall force completely cancels the lorentz force lorentz force is nothing but the force experienced by the electron under the influence of electric field or magnetic field and hall force is due to the application of magnetic field over a current carrying conductor which are perpendicular to each other and the voltage or the force will be again generated which will be normal to both current as well as magnetic field so in steady state we can just say these two forces that is hall force and the lorentz force should be equal which means minus e into eh is equals to minus e vx into b fh is nothing but hall force which can be just said as the force experienced by an electron in the hall field that's why we can write just as minus e into eh and lorentz force is defined so minus and minus and charge of the electron are going to cancel out we get the hall field as eh is equals to vx into b in order to simplify it further we have the current density formula gx is equals to n e v d in general so here i can just write it as minus n e v x because velocity of electrons is taken along x axis and minus sign it is with respect to charge of electron so from this equation we can just say that vx is equals to minus jx by ne so substituting the value of vx from this equation in hall field so eh will be equal to minus 1 by ne into jx into b so let's interpret this one from this equation we can say that the hall field eh 
is directly proportional to jx and also directly proportional to the magnetic field b so we can just include these two like eh is directly proportional to jx into b so when you remove the proportionality sign we need to introduce a proportionality constant and that proportionality constant will be nothing but minus 1 by ne so when you just rearrange we get the proportionality constant and that is eh divided by jx into b will give you a constant which is known as the hall constant denoted as rh and from the equation we can just say that rh is equals to minus 1 by ne here rh is inversely proportional to n that is the main part and e is a constant that is a charge of electron n is nothing but the electron concentration so finding out of electron concentration based on rh which is a hall constant is very simple so this is the use of hall effect where by the experimental setup easily you can find out the value of rh and when you substitute in this formula you can find out the carrier concentration another use is that the hall constant for electrons re will be equal to minus 1 by ne and if you consider with respect to the holes it will be equal to 1 by te so for electrons your hall constant or hall coefficient will be a negative quantity whereas for holes the hall constant will be a positive quantity and this positive sign is due to the positive charge of the hole so this variation will help us in understanding some details about the semiconductors so let's see what happens in case of semiconductors let us consider a semiconductor and ex be the electric field along x direction and bz be the magnetic field along z direction due to ex the carriers drift that is electrons are going to drift to the left side and the holes will be drifting to right side because we have applied the electric field along positive x axis due to the negative charge on the electron the electrons will drift in opposite to direction to that of electric field so electrons will be drifting in negative x axis but the holes are positively charged so the holes which are present in the semiconductor will be moving along positive x axis itself we need to consider both electrons as well as holes because in semiconductors both are acting as carriers then because of this drift what happens magnetic field exerts lorentz force on the carriers which results in their deflection means deflection of electrons as well as holes but the direction will be opposite to each other so the deflections will be in opposite senses because of their opposite charges electrons are negatively charged and holes are positively charged so both electrons and holes are deflect deflected towards lower surface of the sample based on the charge so holes which are moving in positive x axis because of the field that is magnetic field the holes will be deflected in the downward direction towards the lower surface and the electrons which are drifted in the negative x axis they will also deflect towards the downward surface 
So, as these electrons and holes are deflected towards the lower surface of the sample, finally they tend to cancel each other because both are having their opposite nature. But this cancellation is incomplete. Totally the cancellation is not going to occur so some charges will be remaining and therefore there is a net charge accumulated on the lower surface of the semiconductor and due to which an equal and opposite charge accumulates on the upper surface since the sample as a whole is electrically neutral. If there is only accumulation of a charge, it may be positive or negative based on the type of semiconductor. If it is p-type semiconductor, then there will be acceptor impurity and there may be some number of free electrons or conduction electrons. So some of the holes and electrons will balance out each other but some extra holes will be present on the lower surface which makes the lower surface of the semiconductor positively charged and due to this equal and opposite charge that is negative charges will be accumulated on top or the upper surface of the semiconductor because it has to happen as the semiconductor will be electrically neutral in nature. If that accumulation is not taking place then the semiconductor will be having certain charge which is not possible. So because of these surface charges an electric field is produced in the y direction and this field is called as Hall field. So the difference between the Hall effect of metals and semiconductors is that in metals you are having the charge carriers only as electrons which are going to settle on the lower surface due to the application of magnetic field. But when you consider the semiconductor both holes and electrons are acting as charge carriers and both will be accumulated on the lower surface of the semiconductor based on the directions of the applied magnetic field and current and there will be cancellation of charges taking place and finally some charges will be remaining so simultaneously the opposite or net opposite charge will be accumulated on the upper surface due to which there will be the electric field produced which will be perpendicular to both the direction of magnetic field applied and the current within the semiconductor. So that is nothing but your Hall field and here it will be produced in y direction as the current is flowing along x direction and magnetic field is along z direction. We need to remember that in Hall effect these configurations all the three parameters are going to be perpendicular always. If it is not perpendicular then Hall effect is not going to take place. The effect is going to change. So again we define the Hall field which is EH. But let us see what is the value or what is the equation for EH in case of semiconductors. Again we need to consider the Lorentz force which is acting on the electron which will be again denoted as FL of E that is Lorentz force acting on electron and similarly it will be acting on hole, on, hole also. So both are going to be considered. So let us consider for electron. It will be equal to minus E into VE cross B. So again as force will be perpendicular to the velocity of electron as well as the field that is velocity of electron will be along x axis magnetic field will be perpendicular to VA, VE which is along z axis and the force FLE will be produced along y axis. So all these three are perpendicular to each other. So we can just write it as E VE into BZ. Here FL of E 
is going to be along negative y direction and negative sign i have just removed because it means that the drift velocity of electron it is along the negative axis so just we can write it as it is or even you can keep it with minus sign and this force again for the steady state or as you have considered in metals for steady state this force will be equivalent that is hall force lorentz force will be equal to the hall force so we can just take it as f h e is equals to f l e first part it will be minus e into e l e that is the hall force which is acting on the electron it will be equal to the lorentz force acting on electron which is the steady state solution again e and e will get cancelled out finally we get e l e which is acting on electron as minus v e into b z let us call it as equation number 2 again considering the current density equation we have j e is equals to minus n e v e from this we can substitute the value of v e as minus j e by n e into equation number 2 which gives us e l e is equals to minus j e by j subscript e by n e into b z so minus and minus will become plus we get j e b z divided by n e which is equation number 3 and part of j x which is the total current density will be carried by electrons means you can say if j or jx is the total current density then it will be equal to the sum of current density from the electrons and the current density from that of holes so we can say that for jx a part is contributed by this je which is by the electrons similarly we can write the lorentz field experienced by holes which will be again in y direction is equals to e l h is equals to minus j h b z divided by p e where p is the concentration of holes within the semiconductor so again we need to remember that both the values from 3 and 4 they are having opposite sign based on the charge of the carrier now let the carrier flow in x axis because we have considered the current along x axis and they also experience several electric field along y direction also that will be the electric field or the lorentz field felt by the electrons which is e l e another one is the lorentz field experienced by the holes e l h uh, as well as the hall field which is experienced by both the charge carriers that is denoted by e h so all the three contributions we need to consider and that's why the total current density which is along y direction is taken as jy is equals to n e mu e e l e plus p e mu e into e l h plus n e mu e plus p e mu h into e h we know that current density j is equals to sigma into e sigma is nothing but n e mu so when you substitute the conductivity into jx or j we get j is equals to n e mu into the field e so the same thing we have substituted here the total current density which is along y axis will be equal to the sum of the three fields one is experienced by the electrons which is n e mu e into e l e then the second one is 
the field experienced by the holes which will be pe mu e into e l h and the last one is the hall field which is experienced by both electrons as well as holes that's why sigma will be equal to n e mu e plus p e mu h into the hall field e h so this current vanishes because the particles are not allowed to flow in y direction as a result of presence of surface of the sample we are not considering any infinite semiconductor it will be having certain boundary which is nothing but the surface that's why at the surfaces the current is going to vanish that is along y direction so that we can say at the surface of the sample jy is equals to 0 and also we have seen that the hall constant rh is equals to eh by jx into b so when we use all these equation equation number 3 equation number 4 as well as this rh is equals to eh by jx into b when we substitute all the values in equation number 5 and take je is equals to n mu e by n mu e plus p mu h into jx which is something like a part of the total current density because jx will be equal to je plus jh that's why we can just say that jh is equals to jx minus je and that part of contribution of je will be equal to n mu e by n mu e plus p mu h into jx so when we use all these equations and solve for rh we get the hall constant value for semiconductor as r is equals to p mu h square minus n mu e square divided by e into n mu e plus p mu h whole square so based on this equation we can find out what will be the hall constant or hall coefficient for n type semiconductor as well as p type semiconductor so if you consider n type semiconductor it means p will be equal to 0 means the first term is going to vanish and the last term will be vanishing so r will be equal to minus n mu e square divided by e into n mu e whole square so 1 n will get cancelled and mu e square with mu e square will get cancelled and we are remaining with r e is equals to minus 1 by n e and similarly if you consider for p type semiconductor there we are considering ideal case only so p will be having certain number that is the concentration of holes but n which is the concentration of electron which are responsible for the charge accumulation is going to be equal to 0 because that is going to cancel out as we have discussed earlier so net charge will not be due to the electrons but it will be due to the holes for that case n will be equal to 0 which means that r will be equal to p mu h square divided by e into p square mu h square so we are remaining with rh is equals to 1 by pe so again here we can understand that if you conduct the experiment on a semiconductor which is a hall experiment that is a semiconducting sample is taken and current is passed through it magnetic field is applied in perpendicular direction and the corresponding hall voltage which is produced in perpendicular direction to both current as well as magnetic field will be recorded based on that you can find out what is the re value uh, that is rh value which is the hall constant if the value is seen to be equal to a negative value then the semiconductor will be n type semiconductor whereas if the hall constant is a positive value then 
the semiconductor will be p type semiconductor so this is the use of hall effect that is type of semiconductor can be determined and when you once find out the value of hall constant easily you can find out the value of carrier concentration that is n in case of n type and p in case of p type semiconductor and based on that again you can find out the mobility also so sigma we know that sigma is equals to ne mu e and also re is equals to minus 1 by ne in case of n type semiconductor or with respect to electrons so when you substitute the value of ne into the sigma equation we get mu e is equals to sigma e into re with a negative sign which means because re is already negative so this is for the n type semiconductor similarly it will be for p type semiconductor also so based on that we can define hall mobility which is nothing but sigma into r that is conductivity and the hall constant so product of these two will give us the hall mobility so this is about the concept of hall effect in case of semiconductors where we understood how the hall effect is taking place with respect to directions and all finally we derived the equation for hall constant and based on the hall constant value how the different parameters are changing and also what outcomes or conclusions can be taken based on this hall coefficient is also studied so this is about the hall effect in case of semiconductors thank you